Hey there, welcome to Keep Calm and Flip It, strategies and tools for integrating purposeful technology in the remote classroom. My name is Elizabeth King and I'm a digital learning coordinator for Humble Independent School District in Humble, Texas. You can follow me on Twitter at ElizabethKing88. Keep calm and flip it. Powerful words for the remote learning environment we find ourselves in, right? So hopefully this session will give you some tips and tricks and some tech tools that you can use along the way. So what in the world is a flipped classroom or flipped lesson anyway? So basically a flipped lesson is a combination of online and on-site learning, providing flexibility for students, for teachers, has some element of student control, giving students some ownership, some voice and choice in the things that they do and how they show their learning. There's variety in instructional content. That's something to point out for especially our high school instructors, and I used to be one, so I can say this. The lecture style of delivering instruction is not the best way uh, to deliver flipped instruction or blended learning. There should be variety in student responses as well and a combination of tech and non-tech elements. Not everything in a flipped classroom has to do with technology. Technology should be purposely used and it should always enhance, upgrade, or make something a process more efficient. So there's always a reason for it. So like with most new things in education, there are some challenges. And when you go and look at the research on flipped learning and blended learning, a lot of teachers say they struggle with four main areas. The first one is thinking. They just don't know where to start. They've done it a certain way for a long time and it's difficult for them to make the switch. So there has to be a shift in thinking. You have to take a step, take a risk. That's the first part. Challenge number two, time. That's always a big one for teachers. We can't get enough time. There's not enough time in the day. But if you do blended learning and flip learning correctly, you should buy back some of that time. Because when you transfer some of the ownership and responsibility onto the students, so they are more in charge of learning the things they're able to do without you, then you get time to spend on the really deep things with the content and also some of the fun stuff like with the projects. The third challenge is technology. We think that when we flip the classroom or we're doing some type of, of blended learning, every student should have a, a device all the time. And that's just not true. You can have learning stations set up in your classroom where maybe there's only one tech station. So there are five or six students working with technology at one time and other stations around the room have students doing something different. It doesn't always have to be technology done outside of class where everyone has to have a device. You can think creatively through this and come up with some solutions. And the fourth one, training. Teachers want support for trying new things. So reach out to your ITs and your instructional coaches on your campuses and your digital learning specialists. And then if you feel comfortable, send me a message. I'm happy to help you too. We want you to be successful in remote and on-site learning. So there are a lot of benefits for flipping the classroom. And there are six of them right here on the screen. And my per personal favorite one is right in the middle, teaching kids how to learn. That's always a struggle. We are not the gatekeepers of knowledge anymore. We can go to Google and other databases and find all the information that we could ever possibly want. And so can our students. The thing that we have to do now is guide them in how to get that information and how to use it correctly. That's the big test. And that's why flipping the classroom is so valuable for that piece. Class time's more enriching. We've got flexibility where kids can access things when they need them, if they're absent or just need to review material. They can also communicate between home and school easily with um, flipping the classroom and blended learning. And we'll show you how that's possible in just a second. So in all of my research on flipped classroom, I've really broken it down into three parts. There's really three things you need to flip and to be successful at it. Number one, there needs to be 
access to information. There needs to be a hub of sorts, a platform where teachers can put the information and the resources into that platform and students can get that information from the teacher and then submit that information back to the teacher. The second thing you need to flip is content. There has to be high quality content connected to learning outcomes, essential questions, and skills that students need to be able to master to show that they've really learned the material. And teachers, you've got to think creatively. Make that content engaging using videos and interactive websites and interactive presentation um, materials. There are lots of ways to do it, and we'll show you in a few uh, technology ways to do that in just a second. And the third thing, students have to be self-directed. They have to be accountable for their learning. So that means they need to be responding to the instruction every step of the way. No matter how small it is, students need to be responding. You can't just assign a kid a video and say, hey kids, go watch this video, and then expect them to be super excited to watch your video. You have to give them something to do with the video to make meaning of it for themselves. Maybe you hook it to something that's interesting to them. Maybe they answer questions as they go through. Maybe they're summarizing, but even that's kind of boring. So think creatively. How can you hook them into watching the video or reading the material so it's relevant and connected to their lives? Okay, so now we're gonna talk about, we're gonna break these three things down and talk about some tools for each part. We talked about access, the hub, the platform that teachers and students need to be able to send this information back and forth and also to communicate, even take uh, tests and turn in assignments. So in our school district, we use Seesaw for grades K-3. We use Google Classroom for grades K-5 even though it can be used all the way up through 12th grade. We also use Schoology for our secondary campuses. And if you're not familiar with those three platforms, I've placed a video for each one of them on the slide. And I'll share the link with you to the slides deck again at the end of the presentation. So you can go back through the slides and check out all of these cool resources. But a hub for communication, a place to access information is essential for flipping the classroom and blending the learning. The next thing is content. Teachers have to be creative in their instruction delivery. Whether you're making a video, a screencast like what I'm doing right now, and sharing it with the students so that they can access it anytime from anywhere. You can use Screencastify, you can use Zoom to do that. And it works, I'm using Zoom right now to do this. It, it's, it's an amazing tool. But again, you've gotta hold the kids accountable for it. So that throws us over to the far right column, practice or apply. Students need to be doing something with the instruction, whether they're practicing through a gamified system like Kahoot, GimKit, or quizzes, or they're reading a news article on a website from Newzella that's level to their reading level, or they're interacting with you in a presentation through Pear Deck or a HyperDoc. Lots of ways to get the content to the students so that they can actually respond and practice or apply so that you can see where they are and fill in those gaps. By the way, all of the icons you see here on the slide are clickable. We've, when you access the presentation, just click on the icon and it'll take you either to the homepage for that, that uh, tool or a resource for the tool. Okay, and that takes us to the number three, response. This is how students are gonna become self-directed learners. This is the part where students are gonna become creators and curators by giving them choice and voice, some creative ways to show their learning, to show mastery, to show what they know, to be able to reflect on what they've learned, to create something new, to collaborate with their peers, and then to share what they know with others. There are lots of ways that students can do this, lots of options, some non-tech ones and some tech ones. This particular page gives you a lot of tech options for your kids to show what they know. They can create a podcast using Synth. They can create a video using iMovie or Wii Video. They can create a really cool poster or graphic using Canva. They can respond on a virtual board like Padlet or Mentimeter or Jamboard, which is G Suite's version of a virtual whiteboard. They can also respond 
by interacting through a hyperdoc, or they can choose what they want to do to show their learning through a choice board that you as the teacher have set up for them with lots of options differentiated for different types of activities and also learning levels. So these are just a few tools for student response. I mean, there are a whole lot more than this, but again, every one of these icons is clickable. So take a look at them and try something new, something you may not have tried before. Flipgrid's a hot, hot item all the time. They are constantly adding new features to Flipgrid, more than we can possibly keep up. But if you've never tried Flipgrid with your students, you really need to. It's a great video response tool helps you really get to know your students and build those relationships. So I've given you a lot of things, thrown a lot at you for a short time, but here's the thing to remember. You don't have to do everything at once. Pick one thing, just choose one and start small. You don't have to do it all. But your kids are gonna benefit so much for just you taking that one step. Here's the link to the slides presentation if you would like to check out those resources I shared with you today. And if you feel like you need a little more support, don't feel stressed. You just keep calm. You're ready to flip it. And you can reach out to me on Twitter at ElizabethKing88. And I am so happy to help you. Thank you.